Hello family, this is Refueling Your Faith, and today we are walking through the book of Joshua. Um, we found out in Deuteronomy, at the end of Deuteronomy, that Moses had died in Moab, and so Joshua was now the new leader to bring Israel into the promised land. And so in the book of Joshua, we find out that the children of Israel crossed through the Jordan River. He, uh, God actually parts the river so that they could walk through just as he did with the Red Sea, and then they entered into the Promised Land. We find the first fight that they have, or first battle that they have, is with the city of Jericho. And that's where we meet Rahab, and many of us Bible readers remember her. Rahab is a prostitute, is a harlot, and she um, protects the spies that come to spy out that land. And because of her... Um, desire to save them or recognition that their God was uh, a powerful God, um, then she was saved when the people of Israel came eventually to destroy the land. They actually allowed her and her family to live. Um, we find also um, Bible readers that this is where the Israelites marched around the city six times. And then on the seventh day, or one time for six days. And then on the seventh day, they marched around at seven towns and made a shout in the wall that protected the city of Jericho fell down. And so that's where we get that account. Um, so they defeated Jericho. They defeated um, Ai. They defeated so many uh, cities. Uh, and then they dwelled in those cities. And so you just have to read the whole book of Joshua so that you can understand all that transpired and how God showed himself to be a God that they could trust. He told them when they were entered into the land that I will give you this land. And he, indeed he did. We see that throughout the book of Joshua, how God gave them the land. We also see that God is not playing with them. When we read about uh, the battle of Ai, we initially went up to take up that city, but because uh, one member of their camp was disobedient, Achan. He kept some items that God said to destroy. He kept them. And because he kept them, then when they went up to the battle of Ai, they lost terribly because God was not pleased. But once that situ was, situation was rectified, they went up again against Ai and God gave them the land. So we see throughout the book of Joshua how they defeat the enemies. They defeat the inhabitants of the land. And as God had had promised in Deuteronomy and Exodus. They were actually to take over cities that they did not build, have farms that they did not cultivate. Um, they, were, uh, they were extremely blessed. He blessed them in that promised land. We also find out at the end of Joshua that uh, he dies. Joshua dies as well as Eleazar um, he dies as well, the priest. And so we will talk next week about judges. Um, but it's a very powerful book. It just reminds us of how powerful God is. So as I encourage you throughout the rest of this series uh, to read it for yourself, I'm just giving you highlights. And today the highlighted verse is Joshua 1. Joshua 1 verses 6 through 7. And it says, be strong and courageous. For you shall give this people possession of the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous. Joshua 1 verses 6 through 7. Be strong and courageous for you shall give this people possession of the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous. We find this verse when God, at the beginning of the chapter, uh, chapter one, God is telling Joshua that you are going to be the successor to Moses. You're going to help the people to cross over into uh, their promised land. And you need to be strong and you need to be very courageous. And when I looked up those words to get a better understanding, because, you know, um, uh, the Old Testament is written in the Hebrew. And so sometimes the words don't translate as well into English. And so I always go back to my concordance and read uh, what that word actually meant in Hebrew. And when I look that up, strong means to fasten up, to tighten up. Courageous means to be alert. So be strong, fasten, fasten upon uh, what I'm telling you to do. Be courageous. Be alert. Even if you're afraid, be alert and be aware. And so what it reminded me of as a child when um, 
someone comes approaches them that there's a stranger uh, or is just unknown to them how they're cling to their parent and they don't close they, uh, their eyes they actually keep their eyes open and watch you they'll lay their head down but their eyes are intent upon you even though you're strange uh, but they're they need it to cling to their parent so that they felt safe and so in the same way when God is asking you to step out into territory that is unknown to you whatever that may be it may be to go to church consistently it may be to use a spiritual gift that you have or a talent that God is calling to you to use within the church or in the community it may be that you're to stop God gossiping or or lying or cursing or whatever it is that God is calling you to do be strong and be courageous, just like Joshua. I love how throughout the book of Joshua and even in Deuteronomy where we find the same words, be strong and courageous, how God helps us know how we can do that. He says that I will go ahead of you. I will be with you. I will never leave you, or the other word is, I will never fail you. I will never forsake you. This is how you can be strong and courageous, not because it becomes something in and of yourself that you have to try to do, but it is something wherein you're putting your trust in God. Uh, one of my scriptures or the main scripture for this year that has developed for me is, we walk by faith and not by sight. And for you to be pleasing to God, for you to even enjoy any parts of this journey uh, as a Christian, you have to live according to that principle that you have to walk by faith and not by sight. And we can be confident and we can be strong and courageous because God promises that he's going to go ahead of us. He's already determined what's going to happen. We call Jesus the Alpha and Omega. He is the beginning and he is the end. And he will guide us in between those things. He is a God who has never leave us and he's never going to forsake us. He's not going to loosen his grip on us. He's not going to get lazy and not take care of us. He is going to be on the watch. And so as he is asking us to step into territory that is unknown, he encourages us, just like he encouraged Joshua, to be strong, to fasten upon, to do not lose your grip upon what he has commanded to you to do. And then don't close your eyes and just blindly walk through it, but be alert and watch to see how God will bring you through the unknown situation into the promised land that he has already given you. I don't know what that means for you. I don't know what that promised land is. I don't know what uh, the known is to the unknown for you, but God will bring you through it. You just be strong. You fasten close and you fasten tight onto God, who is the author and perfecter of your faith. You uh, hold on tightly to the promises that he has given you and be alert. Don't just blindly walk through it, but be courageous. Keep your eyes open and, and look for examples and look for instances in which God shows himself strong so that your faith will increase. Many of you are wondering, how can I be like that person who is so strong in your faith? I guarantee you they took small steps, small steps of faith, and they built their faith simply by being obedient and walking through difficult and unknown situations that has made them stronger. Just as when you work out, uh, you might have a five pound weight, but the more and more you push that five pound weight, you're going to be able to carry carry that 10 pound weight. You're going to be able to carry that 15 pound weight. So in the same way, as you're obedient in small things, then God will begin to reveal other things that you can walk through so that you can get even stronger. So I am encouraging you today, be strong, hold tight to, fasten upon what God has told you to do in this season of your life. Be courageous, be alert, keep your eyes open to see how God will begin to work in your situation. He will never leave you. He he will never forsake you. He was going ahead. He has gone ahead of you. He is going with you. So even if you feel alone, people have abandoned you because they don't understand the call that God has on your life. God is with you. He says, I will be with you. And I love one verse. He says, wherever you go, he is with you. So be confident today. Walk with him in this moment. And we will see you next week as we talk about judges. Talk to you soon. Bye bye.